Hey, what's up, everybody? My name is Trofinet the Babbling Belgian, and welcome back to Dark Souls 2, the Scholar of the First Sin Edition. Um, if you haven't checked out the first episode, just do that right now. I mean, just check that out first. Why would you be watching the second episode if you haven't watched the first? Uh, but in the meantime, I've uh, just got my souls back. I died once more, which is why I look like this now. So, uh, if you've missed the introduction to previously, we're Bayou Bob, but Bayou Bob in his prime, so he is looking a lot slimmer a lot better than he did before and i just want to take out this guy with the, the fire bombs first because he's an asshole yeah we're still in this castle the tower we started in it's actually called ow it's actually called i don't know why the camera sometimes switches there might be a setting that it auto moves to another target because it feels like it's doing stuff i don't want it to do but we're good ow Seriously, and we're all ready to stop doing that. Okay, we go. Okay. A little bit of peace and quiet. I'm trying to do my introduction. So we're still in this castle, trying to find out more about what happened. We know a bit more about the giants that tried to attack this place, and uh, which is why this place looks like shit. As I said before, I want to focus on the positive things of Dark Souls 2. That doesn't mean I'm not going to talk about the bad things. But I just want to just, just get the positive things out of the way as well. Because this game is actually pretty good, even though a lot of people don't feel like that. But, first up, let's talk, talk to this lovely fellow, because uh, I think this is pretty much our first... No, not our first, our second NBC outside of Majula. Hello there. Traveling all alone in these treacherous times. We are. Well, I hope you have a very good reason. Oh, hogwash. Who am I to judge? <laughs> My name is Pate. I journey hither and thither on a sort of treasure hunt, you might call it. Be careful out there. There's talk of unsavory bandits who prey upon travelers like yourself. Have you seen my face? I am a bandit, sir. I try to get away from this life, but uh, yeah, Baya Bob is, uh, was a bandit in his youth. So this is what he's like right now, and excuse me, I need to scold at my cat a bit because he's biting my cable. Stop. Oh yes, you'll be cautious if you go any farther. There's treasure in there for certain, but the entrance locks from behind. I saw the same design earlier, and it's the same contraption, I'm sure. I was with this warrior, you see, and he insisted that he go inside first. <laughs> The rather brusque fellow tried to swipe the loot for himself, but it trapped him inside. I still have the gent's ring. I do hope he wasn't harmed. So there we go. He was with another warrior who went in there, tried to double-cross him, and then he got locked inside himself. Which is weird, because we can't see anything from here, and this gate seems to be open. But uh, yeah, let's trust this fellow for now and go in. Oh, Jesus, what the hell was that? There's clearly something up there trying to hit me. And there goes the gate. So yeah, that's what happens in the original version as well. So uh, Pate is actually kind of like, ooh, kind of patches from the previous game. There we go. Chopping down some more zombies. So he's like patches from the previous game tricking you into going into areas. And if you don't know, Patch is the hyena from, uh, well, all the, all the other Souls games. He's, he's the guy that uh, kicks you off a ledge. And then tries to loot your corpse afterwards. But uh, usually it ends up with him being stuck. There we go. And chop down. Getting used to the controls. Because I've been going through uh, Dark Souls 3 as well. But this one's a bit more sluggish. So I feel like I'm a bit more sluggish than in the uh, in Dark Souls 3. Because Dark Souls 3 is of course using the Bloodborne system. Which gives you a lot more maneuverability. Uh, and if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, there's a message over there. I think there's a hidden wall here. And hidden walls actually work different in Dark Souls 2 than any other game, as you need to press the X button right next to it to open it up. Instead of, uh, oh, that scared the shit out of me. Instead of uh, just hammering away at it with your weapon. So let's open this up. And we get a Sorcerer Staff and Amber Herb. We won't be doing any magic, I think, maybe some Faith, but uh, no magic. Um, why did a lot of people die here? Hello? Because the anime placement is, of course, different than in the other games. In the other versions. 
Yeah, there's still something making noise. What is that? Ah, somebody's trying to whack down this tree. Interesting. So, with that done, we can make our way back down again. And I think I, can, I can't really drop down here without taking fall damage, can I? What does this say? Try rear. Oh yeah, we can attack him if we want to. Drop down immediately, do a plunging attack, but we won't be doing that. Yeah, a little bit of damage. Well, I see you managed to escape. I hope that brave warrior didn't come a cropper either. Be careful out there. There's talk of unsavory bandits who prey upon travelers. And then he starts so. repeating his own dialogue. But I feel there's like anything else. Oh, but you should take this. There we go. We can get the white sign soapstone from him. Dead to call out for help to one another across the fissures between worlds. With luck, somebody will lend you a hand. So moving on, there's a room over here with some crossbows. Oh god. Ow, oh wow, they just murdered me in one hit. Yeah. I feel like Dark Souls 2 is a lot harder than Dark Souls 1 or 3. So let's try that again without getting stabbed to death. I think we can just enter and then go out again. And there we go, they killed their own buddy. That's how you're supposed to do that. I think they then start pouring out of here, aren't they? There we go. Two heavy strikes taking care of him. And But there are five crossbows, so I feel like there might be actually more. Let's get my souls back. Large soul, blue wooden shield. And a great soul arrow, some more magic. I think I'm going to actually start equipping a shield. So there we go, now we can block. Going to come in handy, I suppose. Is there another hidden wall here? Maybe here? So, going in the area underneath the uh, arbalest, well, the cross, the giant crossbows. Don't think... I know this thing is probably booby-trapped. So if I open it up, I should quickly roll away, roll away, roll away. There we go. We took a bit of poison, but not much. We can pick up our first Titanite Shard. Although I think... Is it our first Titanite Shard? I don't know. And then this thing, you need to uh, add a uh, Pharaoh's Lockstone to that. So let's knock on the door. If you knock on the door, then the enemies will actually be so kind as to... There we go. Open up the door. Hello. There we go. Yeah, I feel like over, over generally you're just locked down a lot more than uh, you would otherwise in the uh, other Souls games. So it's a bit harder on that account. Uh, this is pretty dark. Let's open it up. And roll away immediately just to avoid dying. Although I don't think... No, okay. Life ring and a large Titanite shard. So without the key for the lockstone we can't actually do anything about that. So let's just head into this area. I think we're going to get fire bomb. If they want to throw fire bombs. I think if I stand in between the barrels. Let's just first go and check out this guy that was banging on the tree. Because they're really mad about that tree. Oh, come on. How the hell can you... How the hell can you attack so fast? Seriously, you're holding a 20 foot spear. So these guys are relentlessly hacking that tree. That's not in the original game either. How the hell did you even... There we go. How the hell did he even hit me with the backswing? Alas, nothing happened. So this is not just a tree. This is, well, a giant. A giant that was here for so long, he turned into a tree. And someone left a spear inside of it. That was not supposed to happen. Large soul. But that's pretty much it. We can't do anything with those giants just yet. But we might be able to do something with them later. So now I think we can use this ladder to get up to where those firebomb tossing guys were. To give them a piece of their own medicine. A light crossbow. We can use that technically to fire at those guys. For example, I can use the bow to just give them a nice headshot. There we go. In the face. Oh, look at that. That actually does quite a bit of damage. Because it's in the face. And there we go. And then maybe even take that guy out as well. Almost a first person shooter. There we go. Took care of those guys before they even became a threat. 
and we got the souls even from that distance. So, now we can explore this a bit more safely. There's an item over there, and then of course the fire which I can use to light my torch if I want to. Uh, just rechecking, yeah, okay, so that's the jump button. So I need to align myself correctly, and then, whoop, nope. There we go. Just take out the last one, because otherwise we would be stuck in a very small room with three enemies. Which is not, well, unsurmountable, but still, it's a bit hard. Mail breaker and the infantry helm. So, moving forward, we get to, well, a completely destroyed area of the castle. Like a giant battle has been raging here. I'm just gonna check out if there aren't any more enemies here, since I'm not familiar with the enemy placement. And then we can talk a bit about what happened here, if after I've dispatched these two guys. There we go, taken care. We have a fog gate on the side here, which usually means there's something bad going on. But uh, let's check out this first. Okay, we have a big guy here. That's normally also not the case, if I'm not mistaken. Let's just lead him into an attack. You play as the most immobile piece of shit. Or maybe it's because of my... my uh, my stats, but right now I feel like I can't do anything. Once I commit to an attack, I'm really, really long out of the game there. Um, but yeah, never mind. Uh, I was going to talk about the positive things of this game, right? So, one such positive thing is how some of the locations actually look. I mean, look at this. There's a giant sword stuck... Oh, okay, yeah, forgot about that, guys. Just going to slowly... Make my way to all of these guys. There he goes. There he goes. Just stand still. Don't drop off. Whew. Um, just, yeah, look look at this. Yeah, they came from that cave over there. Um, look at this place. So, as we said before, the giants attacked this castle. And just to give you a scale of those guys, they knocked the head of that statue and the sword from that statue. And this is a sword that's actually in the building. They didn't just knock it off. They pulled it off and stabbed it inside of the building. That's what happened. And it looks awesome. So there we go. Let's pick that up. The halberd. And I think the halberd is a pretty good strength weapon, if I'm not mistaken. Although a bit slower than what we have. Yeah, we need 20 strength to wield it even. So uh, we're going to have to level up a bit further first. Uh, I do... I am able to use the mail breaker, but I'm pretty... Happy with my hand axe at the moment. So uh, let's just keep using that for now. I haven't changed armor yet because there's not really a good alternative for what we have right now. Uh, I'm actually going to open up the fog gate first. Here we go. Enter the mists. And through this gate. And we get to a familiar looking area. Because if we go to the left here, I'm just going to do that first. We actually end up on the other side of the door we couldn't open before. There we go. So this is linked to that staircase uh, that we're right above our uh, bonfire. There we go. Take that guy out. Don't think he drops anything. So uh, while we're here, might as well take use of the bonfire. To just nip back to Majula really quickly, because we also bought the key in the last episode. I'm a blacksmith. I'm nothing without my tools. So we're going to fix that and open up the door with the key. And I think there's even a chest in here. Yeah, there we go. Let's open that up. And it has a few uh, upgrade materials in there as well. A short bow. It's not an upgrade material. It's a bow. I thought there were going to be upgrade materials. And talk ah, yes. to him again. Very good. Now I can get to work. But first, let me set up. Come again later. Okay, and that we will do. So we'll come again back later. So uh, let's level up with the souls we have. And I'll see you guys back at the Forest of the Giants. So with that all done, we're going to explore one more final area. An area that's going to give us a few nice items. Ow, if I don't get slaughtered before that, that is. There we go. Take care of him. Because as I said before, we can actually drop down here slowly and carefully. And taking a bit of damage every time, of course, because that's how this game works. Just so slowly making a, this a game of attrition. And there we go. Oh god. Oh, I'm out of stamina.
I did get the animation. No, yeah. There we go. Got the heal on this time. And killed him outright. Okay, let's get our souls back and move our way forwards. Or should I say downwards? So all the way down, getting swarmed immediately by uh, undead soldiers. The soldiers that used to defend this fortress, of course, from the giants. Which makes this all the more sad, of course. Um, and then we have these guys. There's like petrified people all over the place, but I think these guys we can just swipe dead, yeah. I don't even think this guy has a weapon. So doubly sad, although he probably could kill me in two or three hits. Getting used to fighting these turtle guys. Just bite them into an attack and then hit them in the face and roll backwards. Just need to keep an eye on my stamina. And yeah, there's this fiery tunnel which looks really, really inviting. But first, take out our final undead soldier. Or at least I think this is the final one. And this is the other side of that fire pit with the salamanders on the other side. So they tried to barricade this building with whatever they could find. And uh, yeah, torch the place inside with the salamanders. Uh, still don't really know where they came from. But uh, yeah, it looks like at least one of them is hiding in here. So uh, now, I'm gonna have to be quick about this. Because the fire doesn't actually hurt you. But that is, that is, that is gonna. So the bomb is gonna hurt you. Uh, and I think, I think I need to... Yeah, I need to trigger him. Trigger the fire bomb. It's gonna explode three times and then we can open up this door. And I think we're immune during the animation, but I need to roll in. And this gets us our, uh, well, first proper good weapon, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, the fire longsword. And then we need to just run out again. Because you don't want to stay into that room. Because uh, the salamander is actually behind a grate. You can get through for now. So uh, that's the final thing I wanted to get before we move forward inside the building. So back at Majula, we just want to check out this blacksmith here. He's going to introduce himself to us. You, stand back. This is dangerous work. He says while slapping us in the face with whatever that writing is. Crossed. Just a simple blacksmith. His pliers, I think. And they smell are... fine. Uh, uh, another useless trap. Smack. A man ought to labor with his feet planted firmly in the earth. Stop smacking me in the face. Not roam around like you flirtatious vagabonds. Flirtatious vagabonds? Oh, what does it matter? Go on, show me what you've got. I mean, I'm a healthy young man. You're equipped. Let me have a look. But do it quick. But I've barely seen a woman to even be flirtatious with, so I don't know where you got that from. Let's talk to him again. Drat. You're worse than my reckless daughter. Ah, that's why. Don't spend your whole life in transit, you hear? So, you have a daughter? Is she hot? I think he doesn't care. So, the fire longsword does 78 normal damage and 78 fire damage, which means it's just a bit stronger than what we currently have. Because uh, the fire, the axe is 135, and I think it swipes a bit faster as well. Most of uh, the enemies we encounter are weak to fire, so we're going to equip that for now. So, with all of that set up, we can go down the ladder here again and check out the shortcut we just unlocked. Because there's a few things we can actually check out here. I don't know if this guy actually wakes up if you pause him. And I think there's an other side room over here. We can check out. I'm just going to kill this guy. So as you can see, the fire sword does pretty much the same damage as the hand axe. And I actually can't remember what this is. Large leather shield and a life gem. But this is not, doesn't seem to be openable. And the large leather shield is actually better than the shield I'm actually using now, which is fine. It does look a bit bland. But that's the point of something like this, of course. Um, before we head back out there, we're going to actually check something. Oh, this guy woke up. And then it's third one. And then I can just get in the middle here. It's also a bit faster than the hand axe and uses not as much stamina. So I feel like this is my go-to weapon for now. Let's take the elevator down. 
So we're passing that fiery pit we were at the other side of that barricade before. And we can see a lot of items right there with the salamanders. But we're going even deeper. Even deeper than that. So there you go. Get on top of the ele from the elevator. And then we get this tunnel. And one more enemy before we head in. He tried to parry me there. But he failed. And then there's a door. I think we can only open that with a certain key. Yeah, it's locked. Okay, that means we have nothing else but to enter the fog gate. And we get right to another positive note with Dark Souls 2. All the boss fights, because we are at the boss fight, actually have cinematics. Well, most of them do anyway. And this is our first life giant. And he's actually impaled on a pillar which he just broke. His hand is also stuck. So he tries to get him free. And he looks really, really old because he's been down here for centuries. And there we go. Last bound released. And an angry shout and he's charging. Then let's just roll underneath him. And just... Get around them. I'm gonna have to... Because this is not a hard boss, boss fight. He's gonna try and swipe us a few times. Ow. Should have shut up about this being an easy boss fight, shouldn't I? Let's just heal up. And get back to ankle swiping. Oh yeah, second phase. He's ripping off his own arm. A bit like in Bloodborne, actually. So stay behind him so he can't really use that arm because he uses it to smack downwards. There we go. Just slowly moving our way around. And getting out of his way of the smashes. And there we go. Final cut. The music fades out. And we have victory achieved against the last giant. So we get the soul of the last giant. We get a trophy, of course, and the soldier's key. And a lot of souls, which are going to come in handy. Because Dark Souls is a bit weird in the beginning. You can get a lot of levels with not that many souls. Uh, but yeah, the last giant, uh, which is aptly named, of course, because he's in here, is the last giant. So they brought him down here and tortured him to, uh, I don't know, we don't really know about that. He Maybe just to get information from him. Uh, to help against his uh, brethren. But yeah. He was uh, eventually left alone underneath this crumbling castle. Because you can see there's even a tower just fell down here. Uh, into this cave. So let's check out his soul as we usually do. Soul of the surviving giant who was bound below the forest of giants. The lord of the giants who had brought rack and ruin to the entire kingdom was said to have been felled by an unknown warrior. His beaten and broken remains were then dragged beneath the stronghold where he was sealed away. Use the special soul of the last giant to acquire numerous souls or to create something of great worth. So this guy was the Lord of the Giants. They uh, brought him down here after he had been taken down by an unknown warrior. And uh, yeah, he was not entirely dead clearly. So that's why he se they sealed him away down here. And eventually forgotten when uh, the rest of the kin kingdom fell to ruin. Now we can use the soldier's key we got. Because I don't think it actually tells us anything else. That sol soldier's key. A fort was erected in the forest to face the giants, but now the soldiers are lost and hollow, so we kind of talked about that already. They are enfeebled, but not without honor, and continue to steadfastly defend their country. So uh, even though they are hollow, they still try to defend this castle, this fortress. So now with the soldier's key, we can open... Oh, we can't open that up. I thought this was going to be this door. Oh no, give me a second, I know which door that is. As you might have noticed in Dark Souls 3, you get your humanity back if you beat a boss. In Dark Souls 2, this is not the case. If you want to get uh, your lovely looks back, you're going to actually have to use a human effigy. I'm not going to do that now, I'm just going to show you where the key actually fits to. So, I took advantage of the fact that we had a lot of souls. I went to Majula first to just level up a bit. And then used an effigy to get Bayou Bob back into his lovely stage. The rest of my souls I actually used to buy this fancy falcon helmet from uh, the 
armor salesman, which is uh, what we're wearing now. We can see Bob's face a bit better because uh, he's ready to uh, woo some ladies. So uh, let's head down. And then downstairs we have our first use for the soldier ski. We can open up this door and I think that actually... Oh! That actually leads up. That was the sleeping one, wasn't it? Yeah, the sleeping one just woke up. And that opens up to this area. And I'm actually going to show you this. This over here leads to an open area with... Oh, gold. That used to not be there, that guy. I'm not going to even try and fight him. A grand lance. But that door is something we won't be able to open up just yet. An amber herb. Well, I'm always glad with the little things. And this... Blow, 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 blow. Okay. What actually happens? Can we fight this guy? Oh, wow. That's not what I wanted to do. Ooh, this guy is hard as nails. He's hard as nails, but he's actually going down rather quickly now. If I just keep poking him, should be fine. There we go. He might actually drop some armor. He actually dropped something. A great sword. So if you approach the door, you get the message that you need to produce the symbol of the king. We haven't seen the king yet, so we can't produce his signal. Uh, symbol, that is. Um, and actually, check out that great sword. Ooh. It's very, very big, and I need a lot of strength to actually even use it. But it does about double the damage that we can do now. Double the physical damage, that is. But not something we need to worry about right now. We actually killed a big guy, which is uh, enough of an achievement on its own. And let's open up this chest. Doesn't seem like it's booby-trapped. And uh, we get the Ring of Restoration and three torches. Torches uh, actually just stack, so you get a longer duration on your torches if you get more. And that's actually your first ring, isn't it? Oh, no, we have two rings. We have the Life Ring, which I think use, gives us a bit more maximum HP. And then this one. A protective ring passed down in House Osteria. Gradually restores HP. In the sacred land of Lindels, this ring symbolizes prosperity and longevity for the great House Osteria. But the ring is fragile and breaks easily, as if it hates being taken for granted. Okay, fair enough. So that means we slowly regenerate health. How slowly? Oh, it's actually... you can actually see it. Which is fine. So, we're back at the giant statues, and there's another door we can open up over here. There we go. We can use the soldier ski to open that up. But I think, you know what? Before we move any further, we've done enough. I've promised a boss every episode. And we have a lot to do just uh, after this. So I could keep going. But I feel like this is a good point to take a little break. So thank you guys enormously for watching. If you enjoy, if you are enjoying Bob's adventures in Dark Souls 2 on his way to Drang Lake, please like this video right here on YouTube. And when we get back, we're going to head to the top of the building. Because there's somebody waiting for us up there. So thank you guys and hope for watching. And hope to see you guys in the next episode of Dark Souls 2 Scholar of the First Sin. Goodbye.